Anyhow, we love our quilt. It was so much fun that Patty made three of them. That's how good it is. And you know what, I didn't tell you, I went home and started making another one this afternoon. You did, cool. But I ran, well, out, ran out of fabric. So this I is right it. out of Ruby McKim's book, 101 Patchwork Patterns. Remember, it's the first quilt book that I ever bought. And it's called... Milky oh, Way. Milky, Milky Way. <laughs> Milky Way. Do you want to see it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, when Teresa made the stack, she said, Elle, should I put the antique one on top? The antique one. I made it. And she called it the <laughs> antique. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and so here it is. Ta da! There's triangles. I know. It's simple. It looks hard. It looks hard. There's three. Wow. Yeah, Patty says it was hard. Yeah, there's, there's three pieces. Okay, we are really excited. I can't even get a word in edgewise. <laughs> okay, there's three pieces. Yep, there's the triangle piece square, the little four patch, and solid squares. Is that easy? Yeah. But look how cute it is. They're all intertwined. Those stars are all intertwined. It looks like the Milky Way, right? It looks exactly like the Milky Way, but it's true. I did make this in probably about 77, 78. That's an antique. Thanks, Sally. <laughs> and I've had it on display. But we like that pattern so much. Oh my gosh, did we jazz it up. Are you ready? Yeah. Look yeah, at yeah. this cool stack. Okay, okay, so it's crib size. It's really for like a cute little baby girl. But Teresa made this one and you can just whip it out there. Ooh. Ooh. Isn't it fun? So when you look at it and you, t you tip over and show them, Okay, Pat, you Looks step pretty. out and you show them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's good. Thank you, Vanna. But anyhow, you can see the, <laughs> the beautiful pink stars. And with the pink stars set together, there is this wonderful white star that goes along with it. So, hmm. Like a positive and negative. Positive thing. and negative, but yeah. it's pretty exciting to put together. And then this is the little four patch in this beautiful green. Teresa did a folded border. The quilting is lovely. Amy did this one. And if you look right in the center of each one of the patches, there is a free motion design. It really looks cute. Look how pretty oh, the pinks good. look. Oh, yeah, you can see. That all the, is great. All the dots. So much fun. Wow. Beautiful. Look at that. Okay. Want to see the back? One, two, three. Hold on okay. to it. Oh, so oh, baby girl. So Isn't this sweet. cute? It's just such a cute baby girl. It's a nice size for a crib. Perfect. Doesn't take much time. Okay. So, oh, I need my prop. Oh, there this, there's my prop over there. Oh, your bear. Yes. Oh, this yeah. has This has a prop that I goes. I want it. No, you can't <laughs> have okay, it. Okay, you can have it. Actually, we're going to give it away. A panda bear. Perfect for a little baby boy, don't you think? Ah, little baby boy. One, two, three. Ta-da! Oh, Isn't it cute? It's very, very cute, and the, the little blocks are all panda bears. That is so cute. It was really fun to make. Only three fabrics you need. You need to have whatever your primary color is, a background, and then another pattern. I chose the black for the little four patch. And it's directional. Oh, should I confess? Oh, fine. <laughs> Point it out. <laughs> I did really good with the first couple of rows, but look at the bottom row. I forgot it was directional. Yes, that's how you look at it. Everybody turn to your side and look at it. It's there? fine. The baby will have to look at it sideways. So yeah, well, the bear was we are having around. a baby shower on Thursday. This little quilt is going to Brianna for baby Wyatt. <laughs> I just got that out. <coughs> okay. Want to see the back? 
Oh, when yes. I brought this back, Teresa oh, laughed. Wow. It's, it's directional. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, wow. turn it around yeah. this way. Okay. That's that, great fabric. Is that great? Yeah, that's great. Where did you get that? Here at Quilt in a Day. Yeah. Right yeah. off the shelf. <laughs> I just picked it right off the shelf. But anyhow, outer space, I figure, you know, there's little, the m little monkeys dress like spacemen. I think that'll be really fun, don't you think? That is great, Maverick. I really like it. I hope I, I don't know if I used it all or not. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I bet we can find it. Okay, so <coughs> I did the easy way. I just did three fabrics. Teresa did three fabrics. But you know, my sister Patty <laughs> has to do something different. Well, you love it? I love it. Oh, she's peeking. It's in so there. So I get a text from Al, and you're on your way to Paducah, <coughs> probably. And she said, "Would you make me a scrappy quilt?" And I said, oh, "I've never seen scrappy before. They are all three colors." So I said, "Okay, I'll do scrappy." You ready? I was I was thrilled actually when you asked me to do that. Ta da! Oh, nice. Woo! So I did. Pretty. I decided to try some charm charm packs, and I came into Quilt in a Day. I I had two charm packs. It's a it's a um, collection from Moda. It's called Rustic Weave. And they're coming to Quilt in a Day this week. So unfortunately, we don't have them today, but love the bright colors. And so I, I came in to Quilt in a Day with my charm packs, and Elle showed me how to use her AccuQuilt. And, and it was so fast. We're going to show you because you'll love it. You can and do it either way. Either way you can do it. But I kind of did something different. I decided originally <coughs> I had the four points in one fabric, but then I thought they looked flat, yeah. so I decided to combine two values of one color just to give it a little dimension and, and movement. So, so there, and then you see, do you see a little rainbow going on here? It's when you have every color, it's always nice to lay them out in that rainbow, uh, like on a color wheel, so they all kind of flow together. And the yeah, binding, the binding yeah. is rainbow too. Yeah, isn't that great? Oh yeah, the the other side. Oh. Whoa! Look at the quilting. Ooh. None of us do that. <laughs> we all hand it off, and we're all really, really okay. thrilled. Amy. Amy. That was Amy. That's yeah. an Amy. So remember, but this I, one is a Mary Jo. I got. I can get addicted very easily if I like a quilt. So I had to make two more. And I was thinking of the, um, the uh, Midnight Sky. This is, since we're going to the Milky Way, I decided to use a dark background. And I had some golds. And Ooh. I, I actually. Is it classy? I, I liked And then Mary the Jo quilted it with, this, with the gold thread. Yeah, look how beautiful the thread is. It's just gorgeous. And when I worked on this for a couple of days, I got a little tired of these colors. So I said, oh, I need to add another color. So guess what? Purple. And then I said, and then, oh, I said, oh, I got to put in some fussy cuts, you know. Fussy cuts. Yeah, so that was. When I go out, Patty, you know what I do. Oh. My sister Patty is so Fussy, <laughs> and it brings me a laugh. But anyhow, I know. Oh, they tell me too. Oh. <laughs> you know, we travel in different directions, and I'm always getting reports on what she said about me. I they know. Tell me. I know, and yeah, yeah. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah. It's very, pretty. very pretty. Very, very gorgeous. I think it must go really fast. And the reason that I'm so happy Patty is trying the AccuQuilt cutter is because she's constantly changing her mind mm -hmm. and replacing the fabrics. And so now she can do it faster. Yeah. She's addicted. I know. That's beautiful. And you want to show your top? Oh, yeah, where's your top Yeah, I did go? another one. Uh, finished it this morning. Got up and added the come border. Come back, come back. <laughs> And you did it this morning? I put the border on this morning. Come closer. Uh, <coughs> and I had this border fabric.
from about 20 years ago. If you remember, the there was a book called Town, Town Square, Square Sampler. Yes. Remember? Oh, yes, you were in class. There's an angel in that book, and she has this fabric. The angel is has this fabric, and I, I still had some of the fabric left over, <coughs> and I found it. It was in a box with all these other fabrics, and they all had a little little touch of gold. So I put them all together, and uh, so it's a midnight sky. I, I was watching a movie on Sunday called, um, it was called Moonlight in Vermont. And I said, oh, maybe this is a moonlight quilt. So it must have been the Hallmark, Hallmark. Channel. Yeah, it was Hallmark. We only watch the Hallmark Channel because there's always happy endings. Yeah. yeah. We really like that. Okay. That is beautiful. Oh, yeah. I'm and what's fussy. really fun about it is that the whole quilt, if you follow the directions, oh, yeah. everything presses so nice and flat, and all of the seams lock together. Ooh, that's pretty good, huh? Boy, am I lucky they work, because I never <laughs> dreamed they were going to get to see the back of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So we have the Milky Way quilt. And we also have the little Mrs. Bo little Missy Bonnet to show you from Ruby McKim. So, you ready? Are you ready? Do you want to get started? They um, brought me a cup of tea. I'm very, very excited about that. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm not going to keep on coughing, but I've been talking for two weeks straight, maybe longer. And Teresa left, and she forgot to give me all my stuff. And I guess, did she tell you you were in charge? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, she's back. Nobody's in charge. She's back. <laughs> she's back. Looking for her book. Yeah, and somebody took my pattern, too. <laughs> you can have a pattern. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so it's really cool. Mil Milky Way quilt. It's got Teresa's quilt right in the front. I like that one. So feminine, and there is Ruby, Ruby our pal, and she actually did it in 101 patchwork patterns. And if you can see, see her little block right there? This is what she put in, just a little sampling of the uh, two different colors of prints and then two whites and lots of nine patch, huh? Well, I found Ruby's pattern in her book, and then I came across something that a Mrs. Clyde Coleman from Mutual Omaha did to the same pattern, and she called it Old Fashioned Indian Puzzle. So it has a number of different names, and if you see, she did only a partial block. See the outside edge on the right? It's not finished, right? And that's the way that you have to do it when you try to put these blocks together. You kind of do partials, and one ends and the other begins. And Teresa was going to give me block one and two. Oh. Okay, one and two. <laughs> we did it this morning, so we're going to try to get it together. One and two. Let's just put the panda bear. You mean group one and two? Group one and two. That's good. You like the bear sitting there? Okay, so this is, this is the top of block one. Block one, and it, do you see that it's missing points here? And it's missing points here? Well, it's a partial block, I'm calling it a partial block, but when you make a second block, and you put them, let me see, let me see. And the, 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 I wasn't playing no, and doing it. Is that right? No. No? No. 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 This no. is the first one there. I got it. This comes right here. There. Yay. Now. Now it works. That's, now you, do you see how it works? Mm -hmm. So to put them together, you have to, um, this one has four rows, this has four, but you see how when they join together, the pattern is complete. And you just, it's complete here, just along here. And you just keep on growing and growing this quilt, but first we're going to show you how to make the patches, right? 
Okay, so now you know what I mean about partial, partial blocks. So keep on going. <laughs> Whoop, what happened? What did you do, Teresa? <laughs> okay, so this is important. If you look in your yardage, here you see on page four, it's simple. You've got four patches that are only two inch strips. That's easy, right? Four patches are two inch strips. Solid squares are three and a half inches square. And the piece squares end up being three and a half inch squares as well. So those are just the three units that you have to think about. That sounds simple, hmm? And it just goes on down in the different colors, three colors in the simple with some binding and borders. So now look over here. So we like to do assembly line, huh? So I numbered them of blocks that are the same. So in the first group, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. All one through six are made exactly the same way. So you can assembly line sew those, okay? And then the next group, you do seven, eight, nine, and then across the bottom, turn them, 10 and 11. That's the second group. They're all sewn the same. And then number 12 is all by itself. So there's three different groups of ways that you set your blocks together. And it works in the end. And look what you need. You need numbered pins. Don't you just love this photograph? How uh, Teresa took all those pins and lined them all up on the cutest little pin cushion. You just need numbers 1 through 12. And Patty told me about them, and I thought they were really dumb until I used them. <laughs> and now I you know, really like them. I thought, I thought they sold them in the store in a pin cushion like that. <laughs> and I went in there this afternoon. I said, I'm going to buy that pin cushion with the pins. They said, no, no, we don't sell it like that. That's two oh. units. But you have to be careful not to lose some because I've, I've lost a couple. So after you use them, you put them back in your pin cushion. And I like to keep them in order. It's easier if they're in order. It really works. Okay, yeah. so I turn the page, beep, to sewing strips. We're moving along because I know you guys know how to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's been stripping. Okay, they're two and a half inch, or I'm sorry, cut, retake, two inch strips. Two inch strips, just sew the strips together and press the seam toward the dark. dark. Nan says, dark, through the dark. Okay, so now we are on the top of page seven. We're gonna take one set of strips and put them right side up and take the second set of strips, place them right sides together with dark across the top, okay? And so all you have to do is kind of line them up and then just take your fingers and just wiggle them into each other. I just do like this because as soon as you feel that they're flat, then they're all locked together. Okay, and now comes a shape cut. We're gonna cut these into two inch segments. So this one is from Creative Grid. And it has this like it's like etching on the back so it doesn't slide. It, it works really good. So we're going to just line up the bottom edge right here. You guys have seen me do this. Okay, so Sally Murray, I want to know if you bought one of these yet. Oh, Stripology Ruler. Stripology Ruler. I know, I knew that. This is new. So I squared off the left edge. And now I'm just going to put my cutter every two inches. Two, four, six, eight. And just keep on going. Shades of my video that I ate that fly. Did you see that fly in my nose? I did. I did a video in, in the barn. I knew I didn't cut this hard enough. Okay, I did a video in the barn and I was on my last lines. 
monkey oh. wrench and we were running out of daylight and film and the, the fly was in my face and it went right out of my mouth. Oh. So I very patiently kept on smiling and saying my lines and then it ended and then I got the fly out of my oh. mouth. That was creepy. Oh. So get that fly out of here. Oh, little story of the past. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this and use a quarter inch seam. I have my so straight on my machine. I have so much stuff in front of me. Do you want me, me to take your Let bed? me move this little guy over here. And we're good. Can you see in the video? Right? Right, Candace? Okay, so I have my sew straight on, and I'm just going to turn on my machine. <laughs> Whoops! It's always good to have electricity on your machine. <laughs> okay, let me get it set. Okay, automatic pivot. Okay, foot down. Oops, his foot was already down. Okay, I'm ready. Have my jumper scrap. Okay, this says quarter inch seam line, quarter inch seam line, so I'm just lighting my patch up along the quarter inch seam line. And you're just going to take them and you're just going to keep on assembly line sewing. Now your pattern must tell you how many of these cute little nine patch you need. Does it say? 96. Look at the heading. That's a lot. Is it? Oh, 48. 48. Oh. 48, but they go pretty fast. Marie's making a face. They go pretty uh, fast. They do. They do. They really do. And this is that swirling. And this is what Yvette told me. You don't really need to take the stitches out on the little four patch. You might want to, but if you open it up flat and you go to the right, and down clockwise to the left. And when you open to the left, woo, miracle, it pops open. And then you can mush it. And the reason that you don't have to unsew is because we didn't do any connecting threads in there. Oh. When you have a connecting thread, you have to cut your, pull them out. Okay, look at that, is that good? And you mush them good, and there we are. And you just need to do that 46 more times. <laughs> and that's not bad, huh? That's good. That's fast. That's one. Okay, now we're going to do two. The second part. Okay. Turn the page. Beep. Okay. 82 of these. 82. That sounds like a lot. Okay. So you're going to take eight inch squares. You're going to put, if you're just doing one color, you're going to put all of these eight inch squares, right sides together with the dark star. Draw an X. And then just sew, quarter inch seam on both sides, okay? And then once you have them all sewn, I, I didn't do it because you guys already know this, right? Okay, who said yeah. that? I think I've seen that before. Oh, well here, I'll just show you with my fingers. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jane, I'm being smart. You just draw an X, and then you line up your quarter inch oh. foot on the line. And you just sew a quarter of an inch away, and I'm going to kill that fly. Oh. I got it. Okay, and then you just turn it around and did a quarter of an inch on the other side. So when you measure this, that should be a half inch. The distance in between is a half inch. And there are pictures, there's really good pictures right in your book on page eight. Okay, and so now I take a six by 12 ruler, line up four, inches on the left edge so that I can go and just cut it in half and then turn it again four inches and cut it in half again 
I'm doing that because once you start cutting on diagonal lines, it starts falling apart. And Tricia, are you familiar with this too? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So just now take your cutter and your ruler, cut on one diagonal line, turn your ruler around, and cut on the next diagonal line. So you literally have eight beautiful triangles. Yeah? Eight of them. That was fast. That went really cool. So now to square them up, you need the six and a half inch triangle square up ruler. They get squared up to three and a half inches. So you have to find the three and a half inch line and put it right on the stitches. Honestly, there's hardly anything to trim off. You put three and a half on the stitches, not the bottom edge, okay? And then you just trim whatever is left. There is nothing. Look at that. This is really, really good. I like it. Okay? And then you just turn it and you cut at like a 60 degree angle. And then you go to the iron and you drop the all of the darks on the top. You open and you press toward the dark. Okay, whoo, look at that. I did that pretty good, huh? Oh. That looks good, huh? Oh, you want me to take it? So, all of those, that's good, huh? Ah, oh, you're going to lay it, give me all Am those I? pieces? Yeah, sure. You want me to lay do it I, out? Oh, I'll, I'll oh, do it. Do it's it. okay. okay. So, do you need to have more of these, Teresa? Uh, sure. Sure, just in case. Here, should I keep these two? No, you can them in the pack. I think I have enough. I hope you gave me enough here, yes, huh? I did. Okay, so you make all 82, you make all of your um, four patch, you cut all your four, three and a half inch squares, and then we're going to sew, lay out to, and sew together group one. That's vertical rows one through six, okay? If you go back to the beginning, you're going to see <coughs> it's one, two, three, four, five, six. All six are exactly the same. <coughs> so you could stack them up, and now comes the tricky part for me. I'm going to look at them upside down <laughs> unless Teresa laid them out in any order. Nope, okay. So you guys keep an eye on me. One thing I do know, that with the four patch, like they go into each other. See how this, ch, ch, okay? Mm -hmm. Like that, okay, and I have to get one more. Okay, do I have? Oh! It's easier for you guys to see it. Okay, like that. Yep. Yep. And then I need a blue. Yes, keep me straight. A blue, and then I need another point of the star, like that? Yep. Yes. Is that right? Okay. And then I need one. Right side up would be very good. Okay, now what do I need over here? Four, four, patch. four patch. You guys are so good. One, two, and now another four patch. Okay, and, and just look how they go, like that. And I notice whenever the, like the darks, like they go like that and like that. So if you start observing how they're supposed to go, that works really easy. Okay, and one more. Ta-da! Okay, and then the bottom row. Okay, a white. And then a blue. Ooh, Teresa, I think you gave me just the right number. Good? Perfect. Okay, now see, these are only partially completed. Remember how we're going to lay those all together when we're done? So whenever I assembly line sew these, I go do 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 right down. They always tell me about Patty's dancing fingers. Do 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 do. And look, it's done. Whoa! That was fast. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you how I stack them. 
I always take the second row and flip it to the left, like so. And then these, I just take, okay, let me finish. And then I stack them from top to bottom, so the top block is on the top. Then I go to row three, pick up each of the blocks, so the top is on the top. Yep. And the fourth row, top is always on the block, top. And then you assembly line sew them like this. So they're hanging in vertical rows. That was fast, huh? Yeah. Yeah, there's another fly. They've had. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so now you can turn the page. I forgot to press. Oh, now I'm going to show them now. Oh, okay. Sorry. I did the vertical rows. And you just go straight. You, you just line them up straight. But it's going across that you really need to know how to do it so the seams all lay flat. It's very, very easy. I'm right on page 11, step number one. Um, from the back side, you press seams toward the four patch and solid squares. That's all you have to remember. Toward the four patch and solid squares. Okay, so look at this one. This is a solid square, right? Mm -hmm. So both of the seams go in. Right. Mm -hmm. On the other side, this is the four patch, so the seams go toward that. And when you go toward the four patch and towards the solid square, these seams lock together. Ooh, ah. So that's all you have to remember here, toward the four patch, toward the solid squares. And every single one will lock together. This is very, very important, right? Right, Patty? Right. It's very important. Poor Patty had to make her quilt, I think, before she had any real written directions. That's the hard part around here, trying to decide all of this, how to do it when you don't have anything to look at, huh? Okay, I started off like I was going to a race. And I jammed. Okay, so. You need to have a little jumper scrap. I was holding my nice cup of tea. Okay, come on, let's go. Okay, don't start so fast, Al, like a heavy foot. Start nice and slow and give a little, woo, come on, go up. Ah, all right. So hold on to it if you have to, to give a little pull. Okay, we have to cut. <laughs> ah, I jammed it good. Okay, and I have no scissors. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? Little pair of scissors. Aren't you glad I'm showing you that? That's a really. I just want to tell you, no matter how hard you try. You can't keep on going past this. You have to cut it off and get rid of it. Okay, let's see if I can get rid of it. Nearly. A little bit more. Eric, can you edit this out? Okay. Huh? I know. All you people out there that are watching at home. So don't you feel better? You thought I did everything perfect, don't you? But I don't. I get a little carried away sometimes. Okay, one more time. Okay, foot down. So, I use my jumper scrap. And now, I'm going to carefully feed this underneath and get it started. And I did. And when I get here, this is a what? What patch? And how do I press the seam? And underneath is a solid square. How's that pressed? Always toward the solid square. And so this is just pretty amazing. Teresa sat and figured it out. 
I don't know where I was, but Teresa sat and figured it. How did you do that, Teresa? You, you might have been, you were in Amish country, I bet. Oh, is that is where I Teresa? was? I was in Berlin, yeah. Ohio. Oh, I was having such a good time. I was with my cousin, Carol Ann, and her friends. And it was so fun. We were in a beautiful, lovely Amish. Or it wasn't Amish, but we were right next to an Amish quilt shop. You could just walk across and get whatever you wanted. It was really fun. It was beautiful. I was with all of her friends. OK, so now we're going to take a look at this. So toward the solid square, toward the solid square, toward the four patch. Let us see. Ooh, look at that. Is that good? Yeah. <coughs> That's very good. So that is the first grouping, one through six. So you just sew and you always press following those two directions and then just turn over. Okay, and then on page 12, you have the second group that's blocks 7 through 11. 7 through 11, and I'll show you on the front page. Going back to that front, you have to kind of go back. 7 through 10 and 11. 7 through 11, and 12 is in a group all of its own. Do you see how like one through, um, one through six, there's like four pieces in a row? But in seven through 11, there's only three pieces in a row. And that's what we need to do to get all those solid pieces. Ooh. So there's the difference right there. That's cool. So do, are we going to lay them all out here? Sure. 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 Okay, so let me just pick this up. You want to put them on the design wall? Okay, so you can see it. Yep, this is one. This is one. And I'm going to like clear up so Patty can come here. One, and then and underneath is two. Oh, Where's you're three? supposed to put pins know. on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you took them all. I took them all. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, but they're numbered pins. They're numbered pins. Okay. And so can I give you a little, a little, um, a little hint? Yeah. You know those of uh, the last row on your panda quilt? Yeah. Where they're going the wrong way? Yeah, I know. I so made a mistake. When you put your number on your block, if you put it vertically. It points the direction that your block goes, uh -huh. and then those the other ones that go sideways. You, if you have it turning the right way, yes, you'll get them. You'll sew them right, and you'll lay them out right. That's why I didn't do it right. Oh, when I did, no, that's good. That's good. when I did that's good. Um, the last that's groups, good. when I did group three, okay. group two. I turned my blocks wrong. So I didn't get all those pandas right. Okay, so look at. No, I know. Well, well figured, Patty made three. I figured it out on the third quilt. Yeah. <laughs> so this is one and two. And you, you, you're, she's putting the bottom. She's yeah, made it short. I made so. a short one, too. You can just Maybe leave sorry. off the whole top row and get done quicker. You like that? I like that. I like to get done quicker. It was a lot of fun. Okay. All right. And then do you have the last one? Oh, we don't have it. We don't have it ready yet, but it's okay. Let me see. It's a work in progress. I might be able to do this. Look at that. Is that okay? Is that right? Ha! There we go. It finished it. Jumper scrap and all. <laughs> no, it's really good. Cool. I'm looking for cool. the guys. All right. 
Ah, oh, the, the dice. dice. So where are the dice? Patty is panic stricken. Oh. Where oh. are the dice? Oh I don't goodness. know. Okay, so what would we do Patty has to these? tell her story. Okay, so Al showed me how to do this um, block. It just takes a few minutes, and I did it with a uh, the jelly. I'm sorry, with the charm squares. You're right here. Yeah, we figured it out. This is the quickest way to do it. With and the this, charm pack. Yeah, this one I had two identical charm packs, but then. I found this little charm pack, and it And where did you find it? At, well, your favorite quilt shop. Oh, I like quilted a day. Yeah, and this one, I kind of looked through it and discovered it has two identical um, squares of each fabric, ah. which means you only could do it with one charm pack. And these are, um, let's see, we have two charms, make two points on your, each charm makes two points. And this is the die we're gonna use. And what's now? The, this is this called the six inch cube. The six inch cube. Could you bring in a cube so they know yeah, what a cube is? How many is? of you use AccuQuilt? Yeah, I wanna see. Oh, okay. Well, I never used AccuQuilt. I watched Eleanor for years. She loves, she's always saying, oh, I love my AccuQuilt. I love it, I love it. And then I tried, and now I'm, so I'm yeah. sold. I've been doing it wrong for 30 years, <laughs> and now I'll never go back. No, seriously, I'll, I'll go back, but just for this. You when, have to. Yeah, you if have you to If you can do it with back. AccuQuilt, it's fun. It's so fast, and I kind of was playing with these and I found um, some, uh, some points and then centers to match. And this is what I started this afternoon. And I just got, got so excited about the colors, I couldn't stop. But you can kind of see where, where I started. Uh, there's one, there's one color. Uh, How pretty. This is another one. I'll just lay them on top. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. That way you can sew them all at the same time. That's wrong. Is it wrong? It is wrong. This one? Yes. Thank you. We, is you get them all right or you get them all wrong? Uh, I have to tell you, for the last two weeks, I've been doing them wrong and changing them, so it's, it's easy to, to mess up. I was really excited when she started using the AccuQuilt because she is always changing her mind and has to go back and start over again. And now she could start over again faster. Exactly. Yeah, and I don't, yeah, and there's Look another one. Look how pretty. One. Yeah, here's a green set. So Those are all really going to go they nice. they bright? And I think I'm going to just make a little table runner with these. Cute. So, yeah, you can You going to do it tonight? Sure. Well, I need, if you make me some four patches really quick. <laughs> I could do four patches. Okay. So, anyway, let, that's, we'll just put those aside. How cute Sell they are. Sell them later, unless you want a job. No? <laughs> I'm going to finish my oh, own quilt. look. Look what we found. Some four <laughs> patches. Oh, that would be so cute. Okay, anyway. Oh. You lost them now. Oh, I lost I them. Okay, so here's the plan. Um, I have two for the points, and then my center, we're going to use, this is a three and a half inch die. Finish, finish size. And then I'm going to take a background uh, five inch strip, and uh, you don't have to really measure too much. It's not, not real critical, but if you take a, a five inch strip in half and then in half again. I'm gonna open then, this for you. Then, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to cut this morning with my blade closed. She, she confessed she doesn't ever close her blade. I know. Oh, but when you sew with people, you should close I, your blade. Yeah. I, I have to sew. You just left it open again. I know. Oh, I no, she shot it. it. Oh, she did. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I have to sew by myself because if I try to sew in a class, I make too many mistakes. <laughs> I would never get anything done. So we're going to take the two uh, darks and put wrong side together. 
and then just make a like a little sandwich. Uh, this background is right side up, and we'll just kind of wrap that inside, and then place it on the die. Mm -hmm. And if you notice the kind of the way it's kind of offset, you want to kind of follow. I always kind of pull back, roll and, it. Yeah, roll back, and you can make sure it's centered. And everything covers that, uh, that um, what do you call that graph? The, the play, the blade. It's a okay. blade. And the mat on top. The mat on top. And then this one's really quick. We've got the second. We'll just put that one on top. And I think this one almost looks like You a, look like you could fussy it cut that. It almost looks like a fussy cut. Ooh, fussy cut. And... This is did right I, up your alley. Did I bring my little fussy cut? Oh my goodness. Okay, hold the phone. We can't find oh, the fussy cut. Do you see a little flower bag back there, Teresa? Is there a three and a half inch fussy cut? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But she's gonna use this little one right yeah. here. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, when you have this a uh, like a little fussy cut, uh, if you don't want to use the, the die cutter, you can Use your little fussy cut trio. This is the three and a half inch, and it's got um, X marks the center, and then you see where your seam lines will fall, and then these lines fall on the center, which I just happen to have a little fabric here that was just the perfect size. Perfect. And I lined up uh, the center and the four. <laughs> diagonal so it was just really easy to fussy cut okay um, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something revolutionary uh, yeah when you go home you do this you'll be up all night oh you can fussy cut on the AccuQuilt cutter oh you draw an X uh, with marker uh -huh. on your foam you just find the center of this and put it on the center and you put a little pin. You put a little pin, and then you cut. Yeah, I've done this before. Oh, you, you showed me this before, but that was. But they haven't seen it. Have you all seen it? Okay. But there's no lines on this either on the no. die. But you can guesstimate. Yeah, it, yeah. Or I could just. Okay. I could do that too. <laughs> you know, yeah. You can't. Teach an old bird a new trick. Is that the expression? I don't know. But, but wouldn't that be cute? An old dog? Okay. That would be adorable. Yeah, that's cute. Let me try to put that in the center. Find, try to find the center. Just guesstimate. Okay. Well, we'll try it. Okay. Okay. So the thing I love about this is you can do them both at the same time. Because when I'm at home, I have the old hang, hand crank. Because I'm, I'm very frugal, but this one, I think I'm, I'm going to get one of those. Okay, that we're going to look. I get to look first. Okay. okay. So you, you want to, like, give a little pressure and a little spin so it doesn't just totally mess this up. Oh, ho, ho, look at that. Oh, it's so That's cute. not bad, huh? So cute. That's pretty good. Yeah. So we, we get pressure and we spin because we like to peel off the um, excess and get rid of that. Cool. So here are four perfect piece triangles that you don't have to square up. Yay! And you, right know, you know, it, it all started when I tore my rotator cuff. And now... This is so bad, Patty. I have torn rotator. I have like arthritis oh. and in my finger. I broke my left leg. The only good limb left is my right leg. Oh my goodness. No wonder so I want to use Aki Quilt. Huh? Oh yes, and I could use that to pedal to the metal. But your foot, Thank you, Orion. Your foot is really getting better, isn't it? I, this is the first time I've seen you wear real shoes. You know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no brace, but um, anyhow. So to make this go really cool, I like to use the sew straight. 
and you line up the sew straight. It's got this quarter inch line. It says quarter inch seam line. And do you see right here? It's a stitching line. You keep the very point of that on the stitching line. And up here again, you keep it right going right into your um, needle. That little point, they call that like um, dog ears. Can you see that? Dog ears. Oh, Eric's nice and close. Good. So you just keep that right on the dog ear the whole way. Clear through. Is that cool? So Patty was really the first one that said to me she was having a hard time. Remember the first ones you sewed? Um, you had a hard time um, keeping getting that through there. So now... Now you're doing better, huh? I think so. Well, yeah, I use my quarter inch foot. Yeah. But that seems to do a really good job. It does. Yeah. I tried to give you one. I know. <laughs> I know. We're really excited yeah. that Patty tried the electric one because she didn't even want to use a cell phone. And we looked at each other and said, well, our grandchildren, four-year-old grandchildren can use it. We ought to be able to. Right? Oh, right. they taught us how. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they continue to teach us how. <laughs> too. Yeah. So I'm really excited. But anyhow, you just keep on pushing these right through. Do you want to take, um, take the two off? Sometimes you have to hold on to the end. Okay, let's give you this one. Do you want me to press? Yep. You just okay. set the seam with the dark on the top and press it. Okay. Whoops. And if you're doing a dark background, you want to uh, press to the light. Press to the light? I'm, I'm just... Okay, if you like. I don't know if they followed you. On uh, the quilts I did with the dark background. Okay, so turn around. See, come, come to this end and, and you can talk to everybody. Okay, use your little gizmo. Yeah, use oh, my gizmo. Was oh, oh, that yeah. cool? Yeah, on this one, you see, instead of when you have a dark background, instead of pressing to the, on this one, in this case, I press to the dark, but on this one, I press to the lighter one. Does that make sense? And then the rest of the directions are all the same. Okay, mm. I can't wait to see how my little fussy cut looks. <laughs> she is going to go home and do that, I'm I telling know. you. I don't know if I'm doing this right. But. So you'll be up all night? Here, you get to look oh, at the often. picture. Oh, good. Yes. Because I have to look at the picture, look, too. Yeah, I have to look at the picture. Okay, here's more. One, is it that two. cute? Very cute. Yay. Yay, Tracy, you oh, want it? Oh, it's so cute. Let's take these down. Is it cute? It's cute. It's very beautiful. It's very it's beautiful. Yeah. And so this, did this um, charm pack just come in today? Uh, Didn't know Ryan just handed it to you? No? No. But I can get more of those. You what's, can get what's more? What's the name of the charm pack? They were on sale. Um, it's a... Uh, um, Inner pack. Yeah, it was. Um, somebody gave it to me for Mix and match. Mix and match, yeah. Oh, mix and match. That that was really cute. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, what color what color do you think I should use for my four patch? Why don't you all give me a suggestion? While she's doing that. Do you want to um make them look at you, Al? I was No, gonna, you can talk. Oh, ask I them. was just trying, to, trying decide to decide what to color to do my four Four patch. Let's see. Yeah, I do. Gimpy girl needs help. Oh, that's way too high. Okay, fine. Uh huh. Do you think a purple would be good? I think a gray. A gray? I was. That's what she did was, before. A gray. Yeah, I was kind of thinking about a gray. Oh, and there I actually mixed. I didn't do it on purpose, but I kind of mixed two different two different uh, points, but I could do them all the same color. 
Fun time. Fun time. Oh. Mix and match oh. 12, 21, and then mix and match fun time. I think it's the fun time. Oh, Those okay. are really pretty. Yeah, I love these colors. Because really they're, cool. ju they're just perfect with the textures. Uh-huh. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, see, I'm getting. But then we also have the solid colors coming in. Okay, in my box, I have all the blocks that I made quickly out of leftovers from the Ruby McKim line of fabric. And this is block one. And if you want to follow with me, I'm going to lay this all out. You're okay. I'll, I'll move. But, but I'm just moving them on. Okay, you're on page 13 where you have block one. And I didn't quite get it finished. I just got my vertical rows. So you see I have my pin. Okay, will you, yeah, drop it down so it lines up at the bottom. This is number two, and I know it looks, it's actually, oops, something's wrong. Whoa, whoop, something's still wrong. Oh, I can just see it. Ah. Okay, one and two, and three. I made mine smaller, so this is three. row three up at the top. It's one row smaller. Oh, okay. You'll see where it goes. Uh, down, 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 down. Yay! Because number one isn't all sewn together. And now number four. So once you make this, you'll you look at it and you see it's not fitting, right? Okay, is that good? Four. And then I did five. This was all scraps, just every little bit left over that I cut up. It was so much fun. Five. And this one is number six. See how good, cool, really good. Now we're going across the bottom. And just as these were, although it's going like this, this is where I made a mistake on my panda bear. You have to sew it like this, like all the side rows across the bottom. But when you place it, you place it like that. Good? That's seven. And I have my, my pins. I took all of the pins. I'm so sorry. Eight. And... Nine is just one single star. Very, very cute. And it goes right in there like that. All right. Cute, huh? I really liked it. I had so much fun. Probably spent about two evenings working on it. I was pretty amazed. And while you're right at that page, page 13, there are arrows. And those arrows indicate how you're going to press the rows. Like this was row one, so the arrow goes up. So when you finish your block, your final pressing, you push all the seams up. Okay, and then row two, all the seams go down. So they lock together, right? And then again over on this side, all the seams go up. And they will just all line up and fit together. So what do you think about that? Is that cool? I really like it. It's a lot of fun. I hope you have such a good time too.